Hi guys, how are you? My list one titanium. Welcome back to Real Macro Economics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro. Come on down and join us. All right, so let's talk about oil, right? If this doesn't prove to you that models don't work, <laughs> I don't know what, what what's going to convince you, okay? There is no possible way to know what's going to happen tomorrow, okay? It's just not possible. You cannot do it. Forget it. Just drop that, all right? Uh, anybody that's telling you they have a crystal ball, that they they have a model, that they back tested and they did this and they, they were, that's bullshit. As soon as you hear that, start to run, run far, far, far away from these people, okay? Because they are bullshitting you. There are way too many variables and too many surprises that are going to occur that nobody can possibly predict. So anybody that tells you they can, they're full of shit, okay? And you need to come to terms with that and just kind of start to understand it. Now, can you say what's likely to happen if, you know, all, all, all being equal and so forth? And Yes, absolutely. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're, if you're, if you're telling people that, oh, I have a backtesting model from 1960 that works, okay? First of all, I don't even think you were alive in 1960. Okay, <laughs> that's number one. Number two, uh, you definitely have not been posting since 1985 to show how great your model is in real time. Backtesting anybody, I believe me, I can come up with a lot of backtests <laughs> that look very nice. But for it to happen in real time, no. Okay, nobody has been posting on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter for the past 40 years to tell you that my model works <laughs> okay because these things didn't exist now can you say over the course of time stocks are going to go up yes absolutely of course deficits are always going to increase money supply is going to increase that money is going to flow into into asset prices because they they end up as savings and then yes prices over the course of time will go up that's you know buffett has proven that right he's the richest man in the world or used to be or whatever Right? They, they've proven that. That's okay, but when, <laughs> when you're coming out, well, this means this, and that means that, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. run away. Run, 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 run. Mental game, I'm all profit, blah, blah, blah. Run. Run for the hills. All right, so let's talk about oil. Uh, in my, uh, in, our, in our group, we came up with a, a target around 70 to 68, somewhere in here that oil would likely uh, hit at some point okay now um, here's 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 the thing that it's not the event that already occurred that's been priced into the market already forget about that what we care about is what will the response be okay is it going to be something that's going to end up into war long drawn out war okay is it going to be something that is oh bad you you know here's a sanction you know uh, we don't know nobody knows okay not even trump himself knows <laughs> not even the saudi prince knows nobody knows okay so we need to be um just reading the charts sit back relax see what happens okay um yes you know 50 percent of the oil whatever has been taken offline but we, you know, we have some reserves that, that we can um, you know, fill in the gaps. Of course, we always have those reserves in case something happens, like like it is today. Yes, the Saudis are going to say we're going to have, uh, you know, oil up and running by Monday, and it's Monday already. You know, well, if it's not Monday, it's Tuesday. If it's not Tuesday, it's Thursday, and whatever. You know, these things. There's going to be a lot of noise right now. A lot of noise. Okay. So don't pay too much attention. Just focus on, and, and, and let's wait to see what the event is going to be. All right. Once the market knows what the event is going to be, the retaliation, then it's going to price it in, and then we're going to go back to normal. All right. But till then, um, you just have to be patient. Uh, personally, I would tell you not to not to trade trade oil. All right, because it can be very extremely volatile, and you'll probably lose money. Now you're going to hear a lot of guys and everybody and their mom having a fucking opinion on oil. <laughs> oil was higher, therefore, you know, it's not a big deal for the economy. Oil was lower, so, you know, this is bad for the economy. And everybody's going to say they're stupid shit. And that's fine, you know. That's bar, bar talk. But 
that the reality of it all is that you know we had this uh, this structure right in here okay just kind of going back in time we had this structure it had failed all right we got the dead cat bounds then we went into this kind of formation all right um, you can also draw it like this, which is uh, a pennant. And personally, I don't like pennants. I think these things are the worst. Uh, because what they do is they pop out and then do the reverse. Okay, that's that's been my experience. Now, it doesn't happen every time, but uh, that's been my experience. Okay, so um, for this reason, for this kind of fuckery kind of move, don't, don't, don't trade all. St stay away, all right? Now, something that I've always found fascinating was because what, what, what I typically do is I take the macroeconomic uh, data and then I contrast that with charts and then I kind of figure out where the, the best risk rewards are, okay? And and that's the way that I've invested and traded, okay? So it, I, I found it very fascinating that certain things occur at key areas and it's always been <laughs> like amazing how the charts sometimes tell you what the news is going to be. It's just, I don't know how to explain it. It's very fascinating. But uh, if you were to take the S&P 500 and GDP and you were to, to, to divide it, what you'll see is that we are now right at the previous high of where the S&P outperformed GDP. Okay. And now we're in this channel in here uh, going up and it's starting to, to fall apart. Okay. Uh, last time we started to... to um, uh, to, to fall, as, as you see here, what ended up happening is in December of 2018, right in here, you know, we got that big drop in the market, right? So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to perform going forward, all right? And and it doesn't have anything to do with oil, but, you know, it's just funny that the, the oil came right, you know, as we started testing previous highs uh, on this uh, uh, on this ratio, and here's another example, right? NASDAQ right at the top came really close to the all-time highs and boom, <laughs> it fails, right? It's like, mm, okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, you take a look at the uh, S&P 500, right? Uh, same thing, right? Boom, came right up here, uh, you know, we bombed the oil fields. Uh, it's just, it's it's kind of crazy to, to see that, right? And same thing with uh, China. Yeah, you know, price came up here, failed, came up here, now it's failing again. It's like, okay. <laughs> That's why you can't, you know, you cannot deny the charts, right? They're not fundamentals, but sometimes they're, they're going to give you uh, an indication of, you know, hmm, this is, this is a good area to go short or, or whatever, right? Um, going back to the, S uh, to, I'm sorry, to the NASDAQ, right? So this is the, the, the formation that we have right now, okay? So uh, we had a nice little thrust up, okay, uh, and now we have a complete structure where we have what we call like an M pattern, right? It's a one, two, three. That's completed. So we have our four points. Everything is looking fine, and we came up to test the previous highs, and now it's starting to fail. I personally didn't like this move up. I thought this was a fuckery move because now it creates this kind of goalpost looking thing uh, where you kick footballs through, right? And that typically is bearish. Right, that's that's number one. Uh, another way to look at it is when a structure is starting to form, and it doesn't quite fill the the gap right up here. Okay, that's bearish. That's extremely bearish. So uh, th that's that's point number two or three actually, because then you have this previous high. Okay. Um, so my 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 hunch is the the likelihood is that we're we'll, we're going to come back down uh, and test this area right in here okay at least but it has to happen in a in a in a, in a very thrusty kind of way because uh, there's another structure that I that I follow which is a uh, it's a thrust down move right and then there's a correction and then thrust so it's a thin thick thin right so that's that's what this is heading to so what typically ends up happening is you're getting this high and then this you know, a smaller uh, gap up or, or push higher and then you start to fail here and you can say this is a head and shoulders but we don't know that to be to be true yet because it hasn't hooked enough but this could come up a little bit more okay and then start to fail uh, and then you end up with this scenario where um, people just give up okay and they start to sell uh, and
and then wh who sells? Well, all these people that bought in here just start to to puke it up, and then you end up with a with a nice move down like this. Okay. Now, if you go back into um, into this uh, uh, structure for the last 10 years, right? Uh, Nasdaq going up. This is what I'm kind of looking for here. Okay. This is called a one, two, three flat. Okay. So we got the the first move down. We got the the bounce. Okay, and now we're going to look for that next wave, wave down, right in here. All right. So as a risk reward, to be short in here uh, is a good idea, right? If it starts pushing much, much higher, you know, above this, then you want to stop out, obviously. But if you're taking this much risk to get this much reward, you know, possibly, um, then that's that's a good that's a good trade, right? It doesn't. Uh, it's not going to get much better than that. Uh, does it have to test down here? No, it doesn't, right? It can just come right before that and start pushing higher. That's possible. But again, if you go back in time and you look at everything, you're not going to see a time where you had a nice big thrust down move. And this was big, okay? Um, where you're not going to get a test of some kind, okay? Same thing here, same thing here, right? Here, it took a little bit longer, but eventually came back down to test it, right? Had that higher high. Um, same thing here. All right, that that's the way it moves. That's the way markets move. So um, I'm going to be uh, very surprised if this does not get tested. Okay, sometime in the near future, or medium f future, I should say. Is it because of oil? No. Is it because of trade wars? No. <laughs> Is it because the um, America looks like shit? No. Okay, we don't know what the uh, what the reason is going to be. Okay, that's the, the most leading indicator on the planet as to what the economy is going to do is the stock market, period. End of story. You can come up with leading indicators. You can come up with inverted yield curves and models and bullshit. All crap, right? All crap. Because the leading indicator back in 2007 not once showed a recession. Okay, why? Because it didn't include credit back then. Now they do. <laughs> so now everybody's like, okay, okay, now we have credit, you know, okay, that's good. So now we know what's going to happen. No, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Sure, if you go back in time and you look at the look leading indicator today, it's going to show, oh, look how perfect it is. Ooh, this is wonderful. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yes, yes, my friend. Leading indicator, we follow this. Yes, uh, yes, we make lots of money. Yeah, okay. Fantasies. That's not the way it works, right? So... <laughs> um, Anyway, inverted yield curve. Yes, the inverted yield curve is going to show us the uh, the recession is coming. So you must all go out and short. And what happened? The market went straight up. <laughs> it's not the way it works. There's no models, believe me. All right. So here's another one. Uh, let's talk about bonds because I, you know, I haven't done a, w a video in a while. So bonds, um, you know, it came so close to the previous low. Okay. Our target was 133 or something. It came to 140 something, okay? So left a nice little gap, popped up, but look at it. It's a, it's a, let me make this a little clearer, right? Look at it. It's a big move down and then a pop, okay? So now with oil and whatever the retaliation is going to be and some fear, what do you think is going to happen to the bond market? And I'm not saying it can't go up a little bit higher, but it's going to come back down. How far down? I cannot tell you that. I don't know when a wave is going to end. That's not my job. Okay, but it's just kind of funny that, oh, look, oil went up. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, bond went up. Yes, yes, see, I predicted it. My model showed that this was bullshit. And then now you're going to see it come back down. Why? Because you can never fucking forecast what will happen in Saudi Arabia or China or Japan or Hong Kong or whatever the fuck. That, that shit nobody can know. It's impossible. So when you're sitting there on Facebook all day long, oh, the interest rate is 1.9, the interest rate is 1.8, the interest rate is 1.7. <laughs> it's useless, useless information. And I think that is what makes uh, investing so hard for people, right? In the 60s, nobody had any uh, access to any of these information. No, nobody, it was so difficult to get it. Today, you're inundated with fucking bullshit right across the you know everybody and their mom is posting charts and correlations and look at this and this is a recession and this is a recession for a decade now right and there's just so much bullshit in the markets i'm sorry in social media and um magazines and blogs and 
trading signals and dead 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 everybody's posting that you cannot know what the hell is going on and that's why the best possible way to understand what is going on uh, in markets is to understand fundamentally what the economics are okay and there's always going to be some portion of the economy that's going to suck and another portion of the economy that's going to be doing great and of course the bear shaders are always going to f focus on the on, on, on the bullshit stuff right and the ooh the scary stuff and uh, omit the the good stuff right and bulls are always going to look at the good stuff and they're going to tell you well the the bad stuff is well this is better than i expected you know to make it seem like oh well, yeah i modeled this right it's all marketing it's all marketing okay so you need to know the, the macroeconomics okay that's number one and then number two you need to look at price action and see how the money is flowing between asset classes and then take those that information contrast it, and say okay well you know this is a nice area where we, where we should take a, a a short or we should go long all right uh one of my good best calls was here with the um, uh the 10 year okay where uh, we had this rising uh, wedge, and I said, you know, everybody's saying, oh, it crossed the line, 3%, it crossed the line, we're going much, much higher, Fed raising rates is, you know, uh, inflationary because it adds money to the economy and all this bullshit, and what happened to... <laughs> right, I did know how, how far it was going to go down, of course, but I did know that, you know, we're going much, we're going lower, right? Why? Because that's what the chart was telling me. Right? That's the way price action moves. Um, I, I bought, uh, and I'll show it to you real quick, just for the hell of it. I bought bond or a shorter bonds. I bought TBT, right, right in here. Why? Well, look at it. Okay, you had a nice little wedge, and what happened? It popped out, formed a flag, and then off it went. There you go, gap fill. Everybody's happy, and now guess what? Well, we bombed the uh, uh, Saudi uh, oil fields, and now it's going to come back down. Oh, well, yeah, okay. So, again, that's the importance of really understanding charts, really understanding macroeconomics, and, and how it all plays uh, together. And, uh, you know, right now we don't have market leaders, right? If you look at the, uh, the fags, is what I call them, right? There's no market leadership. Right, it's just gone flat. Boom, done. So it's just doing this crap right now. So without a market leader pushing you higher, uh, I'm not very bullish on the market. In fact, uh, I'm in the bear shitter camp, okay? So you can call me a bear shitter now. Uh, so that's it. I hope this video helped you guys out a little bit. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of noise. I know it's very uh, sexy to come up with your own opinion and post it so everybody can say, oh, look, you know, you were right. Uh, but don't don't fall for that. Don't trade that. You can do that, but don't trade it. Okay. And the last last portion about you, anti-American evil empire is always meddling and loves war and all these conspiracy bullshit. I want you to think about this. Okay, that this attack in Saudi occurred with the U.S. military there. Okay. Uh, imagine what would happen to the Middle East if there was no U.S. military presence. And if you're saying, well, I don't know what would happen, you know, it would probably be better. Really? Okay. We did not get involved in Syria. Look what happened in Syria. A million, what, five now? I don't know how many it is. Deaths, and it's ongoing, right? So, uh, I know it's it's morally cool to say that, oh, you know, that we should not get into wars and everything. Well, no, Nobody wants to go to war, okay? But when you have idiots that are basically tribes, okay, and they're measuring their dicks and going at it all the time, and the world economy depends on that oil, you better have a fucking presence in the Middle East, okay? So they don't kill each other. Uh, and if you're telling me this bullshit, it's the petrodollar, it's about the petrodollar, and the petrodollar, no, it's not about the petrodollars. Because we give them the dollars that they can use, we take their oil, they take our dollars and reinvest it back into American companies, right? Twitter and whatever. 
uh, Citibank and, and whatever okay so the money comes right back to the US so not only do we have their oil but we also have our dollars back in American companies so we don't need their oil okay especially now with fracking we're we're producing what 12 million barrels a day or something Saudi is producing nine right so <laughs> This, oh, it's the petrodollar. We need to go and attack them so we can take their oil. No, we already took their oil a very, very long time ago. Okay? So, yeah, just stupid people saying stupid Alex Jones bullshit. Okay? And, and the Saudis did this on purpose for themselves so they can raise their, um, the, the petrodollar. And they can raise the oil prices so they can uh, spend more. They need $80 oil, so they bombed themselves. Yeah, right. Uh, Aramco is about to go into a $2 trillion fucking uh, IPO, and they're going to fucking sabotage themselves. Really fucking smart thinking right there. Nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. If you're wasting your time with that, you, you know, I can't help you. But you can think whatever you want, just don't trade it. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.